In the last Expanded Universe novel I reviewed, Jedi Search, that ended with Luke opening his Jedi Academy on Yavin 4, and with one of his new students being a Witch of the Thomir. With this month's book, The Courtship of Princess Leia, we see where the Witches of the Thomir came from. Based on an interview with author Dave Wolverton, he was approached by Lucasfilm asking if he wanted to write a Star Wars novel. He said yes, and was offered a time range he could go in, and he decided to go with telling the story on how Han and Leia got hitched. He also wanted to go with a narrative arc that would put more women in positions of authority in the Star Wars universe, which led to the creation of the Witches of Dothomir. Prior to the arrival of Grand Admiral Thrawn, the New Republic has taken Coruscant and is currently fighting various Imperial warlords, in particular Warlord Zinj. Han Solo has been commanding the efforts against Zinj, which has kept him separated from Princess Leia. He returns to Coruscant after his latest campaign, just in time for the arrival of a fleet from the Hapes Cluster. Leia and Mon Mothma have been engaging with dip in diplomatic overtures with the Hapian government for quite some time, but without success. However, Print, uh, Leia and Mon Mothma are surprised, and Han is horrified, to learn that the Hapens will ally with the New Republic if Leia, being nobility, will marry the crown prince of the Hapes Cluster, Princess Solder. Leia is no stranger to the concept of political marriages, and when she learns that a Solder is kind, charming, and courageous, and also dashingly handsome, she's willing to consider the offer. Han is even further horrified by this, and, after he wins the planet to Thomir in a game of Sabic, uses a hapen gun of command to briefly mind Whammy Leia and get her on the Falcon bound for the Thomir so that he can try to woo her well away from his soldier and the turmoil of court. Meanwhile, Luke Skywalker has been searching for Jedi records, and his research has led him to information about a wrecked Jedi training vessel on the Thomir. Luke goes to check it out, but not before stopping back on Coruscant, running into a soldier, and the two of them deciding to chase after Leia and Han. Both groups discover that the planet, which is a barely on any records and which doesn't have space flight, is home to one of Zinj's shipyards, and the surface is under interdiction. Both groups are shot down, and end up having to team up to survive, and in particular have to join forces with the wish Witches of Dothomir, women on the planet who have their own force using tradition and who have trained Rancor, which are native to the planet, to serve them. Our heroes learn why the planet is interdicted. Night Sisters, witches who have turned to the dark side of the Force and seek to control the galaxy, and who have taken control of the Emperor's formal political prison which was placed on the planet, are trying to leave the planet so they can carry out their goals. Zinj, not being stupid, doesn't want to let them off the planet, and thus that's why it's placed under interdiction, and in turn he's also blown up all the ships at the prison. Our heroes end up having to break into the prison, the base of the Night Sisters, stealing the spare parts they need to fix the Falcon, all, and then fending off the Night Sisters while fix, fixing the Falcon and ultimately destroying Zinj's ship. Through all of this, Leia rediscovers her feelings for Han. Meanwhile, the soldier falls for Tenennial Dejo, 
one of the witches, and they end up courting each other and agreeing to marry over the course of the book. In the conclusion, Zenj is completely defeated and dead, Han and Leia agree to marry, a soldier's mother admits that she had his brother and a soldier's last fiancé murdered, and planned to have Leia murdered because she was a pacifist, what, who believes in democracy, even though she's in the, Leia is a high-ranking official in the New Republic government, and that if she was, were assassinated by the leader of a foreign power, that would lead to a war. We are introduced to Dothomir and its society. We also learn the, that Dothomir is the homeworld of the Rancor. In the West End Games RPG, it was assumed that the Rancor was unique. Here we see considerably more of them and learn that they are very intelligent and have their own society. We also get more into an alternate force-using tradition in the form of the Witches of Dothomir. We get an idea of how the Jedi Order worked during the Old Republic, or at least part of the Old Republic. There was a main temple in Coruscant, led by a Grand Master, implied to be Master Yoda, and until it was sacked by the Imperials. With this structure, the Jedi seem like a mix of the Shaolin combined with the Knights Templar, complete with being destroyed by a central authority followed by a, rave, a wave of propaganda about how totally evil they were, you guys. We're also introduced to another Imperial superweapon, the Night Cloak, a series of satellites that can surround a planet and generate a field that would block out all sunlight, killing all life on the planet's surface. We are also introduced to the Haven Cluster, a semi-independent monarchy that existed as a sort of vassal state under the Empire, with their own borders and under their own control and governance, but which cooperated with the Empire, including turning over Jedi which wished, which wished to hide in their borders. Finally, we learned that in wider galactic society, force use does not always merit respect, the Empress of the Hapes Cluster condescendingly refers to Force users as spoonbenders. Luke is still looking for documentation of Jedi training methods, and he has found the mother load in this book. His Force attunement also means that he can sense almost all life, and we can also see that he's learned how to go into a healing trance in this book. Leia accepts Han's marriage proposal, Albeit after being mind whammied and kidnapped, which is. Ew. In spite of having strangled Jabba the Hutt to death, and after having killed a small army's worth of Imperial stormtroopers, Leia still has a reputation as a pacifist because she is Alderanian nobility, which just goes to show that some people can't catch a break. Han is related to a pretender and usurper to the throne of Corellia. He proposes to Leia after getting them stranded on a planet that Han won in a game of cards, and after a battle that nearly gets them both, and then later just Han, killed. Han has a bad habit of sending gloats over open comm channels to his opponents, including telling Zinj to, quote, kiss his Wookiee, which Chewbacca found absolutely hilarious. Chewbacca shares Han's sense of humor, and can, along with Han, performed very in-depth repairs on the Falcon incredibly fast, overhauling the damaged ship using scrounged Imperial parts in three hours. Princess Older, to use a shoujo anime archetype, is the Prince. His descriptions basically come with Bishonen sparkles. Leia is not his first fiancé, but she is the only one thus far who has stopped being his fiancé in a manner that didn't involve death. C-3PO is capable of decrypting Imperial codes by listening to a coded signal, and with sufficient time, say a few hours, he can completely decode it just on his own without the assistance of additional computing software, or hardware or anything like that. Luke comes across a lightsaber in a dead Jedi's home with a opalescent blade. This is the first time we've come across a blade that could, theoretically, change color. The Courtship of Princess Leia is kind of a rough read. It's trying to be an adventure romance story like The Jewel of the Nile and Romancing the Stone, but the writing for Leia feels off. She's nobility, but she's enough of an active figure in all the other Star Wars stories that I can't help but think that Leia's default response to someone proposing a political marriage 
especially under these specific circumstances, would be a reflexive fuck off, or the Star Wars equivalent thereof. Additionally, I can't buy Leia and Han falling out of love, or nearly out of love, with each other at this point, especially after all they went through in the movies. At where they are in The Force Awakens, I get it. They've had a family and a son, and then their son went and joined the Empire Reborn after killing a bunch of people, and they have to cope with it, and being together is as much a painful reminder of what they've lost as much as it is good to see each other and be together. Here, they've just been separate for a few months. And in the timeline, we have... Leia and Han being separate for several more months when Han's, you know, in Carbonite, and thus completely incommunicado, and Lando's right there, and nothing happens between them. Similarly, Han's macho taunting and gloating feels a lot more like the concerns people might have had with the Han Solo in the prequel film that's coming out in 2018 being a little too Star-Lord. The callback for it at the end of the book, where Han fires concussion missiles point blank into the blank into the bridge of the Iron Fist, is somewhat cringeworthy. And I can't see Han not saying something under those circumstances, and the callback makes sense in the context of the book. But something else would have felt a lot more in character as a one-liner than just a in a very childish insult. Honestly, the best written romance in the book isn't Han and Leia. It's a soldier and Tenennial. They're the ones who have to work through the rules their societies have over people who care about each other, interact with each other, to properly convey their feelings. And their rom their romance, their story, is interesting and really enjoyable to read. It just it comes halfway through the book, and you have to get through the baggage of Han and Leia, and you have to get through the bits of the story that are kind of skeevy and unpleasant to get to this point. And honestly, also, the title, The Courtship of Tenennial Dejo, or Star Wars, The Courtship of Tenennial Dejo, doesn't really sell books. So, I do understand that bit of the title. So next month, I'm doing something a little different. Because next month, around the time we'll be doing this video, it is time for the new Star Wars movie. Specifically, I believe, yeah, November... Thir uh, December 13th, that is the week a um, the next Star Wars core movie comes out. And so because of that... I'm going to push the video back about a day or so, so I can see the new, st or not a day, but a week or so, so I can see the new Star Wars movie. And then I'll be talking about that, because, unlike the last Star Wars film, we are now stepping more directly into references and callbacks in this movie to material that we're getting into in the Expanded Universe right now, with, well us getting flashbacks to what Luke's Jedi Academy would be. So, we're going to take a look at that next month, and then in January, we will continue with the Jedi Academy, Jedi, Jedi Academy trilogy, my apologies for the stumbling over my words, with Dark Apprentice. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like this video and subscribe to the channel to be notified when new videos come out. If there's something in particular you'd like to see me cover or just want to get your name in the credits or otherwise help the show, please support my Patreon. Once again, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time. <laughs>